And for those of you who have read the first chapter, enjoy it again. <laughs> <clears throat> chapter one. <clears throat> Unplugged dog dreams. Okay then, here we go. Where to start? How about the premise? Sounds good to me. So, this entire book is based on three main concepts. These three concepts, let's call them the big three for short, are, for all practical purposes, the basis for our psychological reality. Well, actually, our perceived reality on any level. It's quite limiting to say it's only our psychological reality because I believe everything is related. One cannot separate the physical from the non-physical, nor the psychological from the spiritual. It would be like trying to flip only one side of a coin. If you're going to flip one, then both sides must go for the ride. I believe there is no separation between our realities. Distinct differences, but no separation. So although much of this book will relate to scientific and or psychological data, I believe one will easily find the underlying spiritual current. At other times, I believe the spiritual current will be quite evident. So, it is in this chapter that one possible explanation as to why we are the way we are shall be revealed. The information I will share with you will stay with you for life. Once it's revealed, I believe it will assist you in remembering everything you'll need to remember in order to remember or pull all the parts together of yourself in order to affect your life in the way that you deem necessary. This way, you may fulfill yourself in your dreams to any degree that you wish. <clears throat> After you read this chapter, you'll have one of the secrets to creating an amazing life. After that, you'll have the foundation on which to build. It's kind of like I'll supply the sample blueprints, the model, and you provide the materials, your life experiences, and together we'll build an amazing place for you to live and grow. You'll have all the skills and training necessary to do any remodeling or maybe even addition or to add an addition or two later at a later date if you'd like. So, what's this unplugged dog dream song about? Well, I'm glad you asked. It, my friends, is the basis for our perceived and experienced reality. Each word stands for one of the big three concepts I mentioned earlier. The simple phrase, unplugged dog dreams, can be used by each of us to remind ourselves of the things that keep us from getting what we want out of life. Once we remember those things, we can change some habits and do some activities which will bring us, to, <clears throat> which will bring us whatever it is we want. In order to understand what I mean, I'll have to tell you three short stories. All three stories are based on three separate and unrelated research projects that took place in three separate decades. When the findings of these projects are strung together in a particular sequence, they create a picture and possible explanation as to why things are the way they are here on Earth. Ultimately, they point to an undeniable, irrefutable, possible way to look at life in the universe. And as I stated in the introduction, I do not claim to have the truth or the way. I simply provide a possible way to view this thing we call life. And it can be used as a filtering system to gain new perspectives on life. So, here it goes. Unplugged doctors. The first word in our phrase is unplugged. The following paragraphs will describe the first set of scientific findings that the, par <clears throat> that the word unplugged will represent. To understand these findings, we must first talk about something called self-talk. Each one of us has a voice inside our head that speaks to us all day, every day. I can just imagine someone who's reading this say to themselves, what are you talking about? It? It's that voice that just asked that question that I am specifically talking about. That voice speaks to us all the time. This inner dialogue goes on and on, all day, all night, making comments, storing information, doing what it does. That voice, or that inner dialogue, is referred to in the scientific community as subvocalization, or self-talk. These subvocalization self-talks, or thought forms, are happening quite rapidly. In fact, so rapidly that we actually don't hear most of them. If I were to speak to you as fast as I could, let's say like a very fast auctioneer, your mind can think and speak to itself at least four times faster. That means that as each of us are listening to someone talk, like me reading right now, we are actually talking, talking and listening to ourselves 
form opinions, responses about four times faster than they're speaking. Apparently, research indicates that during a conversation, we actually listen to ourselves more than we actually listen to the person who's talking to us. Whether we're in conversation with someone or not, the rapidity of our self-talk is astounding. My understanding is that each of us have billions of neural impulses each moment. And amongst those billions of impulses are a certain amount of a particular type of impulse that must be happening in order to determine that our brains are alive. My understanding is that one must have a minimum of about 90 of these particular brain impulses per minute, or their brain is considered dead. And you know what happens when the doctors determine your brain is dead. They unplug you. And what happens after that is a subject for a whole other book. So, 90 brain impulses per minute, per minute, that's about one and a half impulses per second. Now, apparently, these continue on and on throughout the day. And by the time 24 hours has elapsed, Somewhere around a minimum of 130,000 brain impulses have occurred. Now, among these brain impulses, we have self-talk. Current research indicates that we have around 35 thought forms, 35 thought forms per minute. When extrapolated out you know, for a 24-hour period, it is estimated that we have around 50,000 self-talk, self-talk and self-talk thought forms every day. What the heck are we talking to ourselves about? <laughs> I, this next part may blow your mind. I mean, science has shown that of these 50,000 thought forms, roughly 80%, 40,000 of them, are negative or limiting in some way. I'll repeat that. Of 50,000 thought forms that we have every day, 80% of them, or 40,000, are negative or limiting in some way. But wait, that's not all. Of these 50,000 thought forms that automatically happen all the time, every day, like the average human being who's attending to his or her self-talk, who's really like working with their self-talk, is only aware of around 5% of this dialogue. Did you get that? 5%, 0.05. The average person only interacts with around 5% of his thoughts. The other 95% just occur without our attention or our direction. They just happen. That means that of the 50,000 sub-vocalization self-talks that occur throughout the day, we bring conscious attention to and interact with approximately 2,500. But wait, once again, that's still not all. Of these 2,500 thought forms that we actually interact with, 80% of them, or 2,000 of them, are negative or limiting in some way. So that means for each day, we have approximately 2,000 negative thoughts for every 500 positive ones. That's roughly a 4 to 1 ratio, and if you look at it in terms of a tug of war with oneself, is it any surprise who's winning? I mean, for example, I might say to myself, I'm going to write a book. My own mind responds with, you can't do that, are you crazy? Why do you think you can do that? If that would easy, if it was that easy, everyone would do it. <laughs> Your own mind is probably wrestling with these statistics right now. Part of your thoughts want to hear this, and yet a much larger contingency is attempting to persuade you differently. All day long we experience this internal tug of war. What really gets me is that we're only aware of and interact with approximately 5%. So in summary, 50,000 thought forms a day, 80%, 40,000 of them are negative or limiting. <clears throat> in some way, of these 50,000, we're aware of 5%, 2,500 of which 2,000 are negative and limiting in some way. So for every 500 positive thoughts we have, we have 2,000 negative ones. How do we stop this thing? I mean, how do we turn it off? Where's the switch? Can't we just unplug it? Unfortunately, the answer is no. We cannot unplug it. One can unplug from it, but one cannot unplug it. I'll say that again. Once again, one can unplug from it, but one cannot unplug it. If you did unplug it, they would unplug you, which is the subject for a whole other book. <laughs> and besides then, you wouldn't be able to learn how to ultimately use this information to your advantage, which, if I'm not mistaken, is the whole purpose of you reading this book. So, in review, we think and speak to ourselves through self-talk all day, every day, and our negative thoughts outweigh our positive thoughts four to one. Okay, that's it. That's the first part of the big three. The word unplugged represents all of that information. Now. Let's continue to the next piece of the puzzle.